Hey everybody, it's Brooke with The Buttered Home and welcome to My Messy Kitchen. We have a real treat for you tonight. We are gonna be showing you how to make homemade chicken and dumplings. Now, I know there are a lot of recipes out there that show you all these really great shortcuts, but I'm just here to tell you that uh, if you have a busy life, then you could still make homemade chicken and dumplings uh, and take a shortcut that is reasonable. Now, most of the shortcut recipes you're gonna find are gonna have a shortcut when it comes to the dumplings. Now, I would advise against that because I'm about to show you how making dumplings really is easy and you really don't wanna skimp on this because you uh, get a better dumpling every single time if you just make it from scratch and it literally takes five minutes. Uh, the one shortcut that I use because I do work for a living is my chicken. Now, if I'm at home on the weekends and want to boil a chicken, then that's fine uh, because I usually make, use the broth for the stock for this. But if I want chicken and dumplings in the dead of winter on a Wednesday night, I just go by the store and pick up a rotisserie chicken, let the store do the cooking for you, uh, I remove most of the skin and pull the chicken from the bone, and then I don't have to do that. So if there were a shortcut I would take, it would be on the chicken portion and not the dumpling. Uh, and of course with the stock too. Now naturally if you boil your own chicken, you're going to have, it's going to have its own stock that can be drained and reused for this process as well. Uh, and you can do that, and that's a step that's not hard to do. Um, but the main thing that I've seen is that people have a problem. They always want a quick way to do the dumplings. Well, I'm going to show you that the scratch way to do the dumplings really is the quickest and best for flavor. So we start out with just a few ingredients. And as usual, I'm only doing half the recipe because all of my recipes are easily halved or easily doubled. So if you have a smaller crowd you're doing this for, uh, if it's just two or three of you, then halving this recipe is a doable thing. And then you can take the other half of that rotisserie chicken and use it for something else. Uh, so we have half of a rotisserie chicken here. And then we have half of four, uh, two cups of self-rising flour. Uh, and then we have some chicken broth. The recipe calls for two cups of self-rising flour and a half a cup of chicken broth, and then a third of a cup of shortening. <clears throat> so I've halved all this, so if it looks smaller, that's why. That is all you need to make the best dumpling you will ever put in your mouth. <laughs> So I'm going to uh, get my liquid starting to boil. And what that consists of is four cups of water and four cups of chicken broth. Now you can lower the salt in that by using the lower sodium chicken broth uh, and you still have that chicken flavor. So for tonight, we're gonna be using my electric pressure cooker. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this later, that it can totally be done from start to finish in that, as well as on top of the stove. So, <clears throat> in a perfect world, before you get started, you're going to put your liquid into your pot or your insert for your electric pressure cooker, and you are going to start it to boil. So you want it to kind of come up and, and boil. And on the pressure cooker, we're using the saute function because that works just like uh, a burner. So while that's heating up, we're going to take our flour, and we're gonna show you how to do this overhead. <laughs> we're going to take our flour and to that, we are going to add our shortening. And this step is a lot like biscuits in the fact that you have fat and you have flour. And you are going to cut that fat into the flour. Now here's the reason we use shortening for this and not butter. Shortening has a higher um, capacity for higher heat. So it will actually work as a better binder and create a more tender dumpling than say butter would. Now I know there are people who use butter for their dumplings, but I want my dumplings to kind of take on the flavor 
of the chicken and the chicken broth. So for me, using shortening always tends to work better as you're not adding kind of a, you know, a flavor to your dumpling because you want it to absorb what's going on in the pot. All right, just like biscuits, we're going to kind of cut that shortening in just until you get a consistency of small peas. And that doesn't take long. And if you don't have a pastry cutter, you can use two forks, you can use two knives, or you can simply use your hands and just take it and just work it into the flour just like so, okay? Now make sure I don't have any shortening on my fingers and get that good and cut in. Now, before we get started, if you were going to add some salt and pepper, you could do that to your uh, liquid right now. Because I am not using low sodium um, broth, I put just a tad, and you just wanna put just a little bit on there. Um, you just wanna put a little bit on there to get it uh, to, I'm sorry, I got distracted. You just wanna put a little bit in there um, so you can add more later if need be. Uh, we do like ours peppery, so I'm putting a good bit of pepper into my broth and water mixture over here because we like that punch of the pepper in our chicken and dumplings. Now, I like to mix my biscuits and my dumplings with a fork. So here we have about a half a cup of chicken broth, and I'm just gonna add that in just a little bit at a time, not overworking things, just until it comes together and that flour starts to pull aside, pull away from the sides of the bowl. And you can even just kind of mash it down if you want to. All right, there. We have just a scraggly dough right there. It doesn't look like much, but I promise you it's gonna come together and be a real thing of beauty. All right, so now I'm going to lightly flour my surface. And all of this can be done while your broth and your water is coming up to a boil. And I'm going to put my dumpling dough down on my floured surface and I'm just going to flour my hands just a little bit and I'm going to do just like I do with the biscuits and kind of just press it together into a little mound and then I'm going to kind of work it flatten it and fold it just a little at a time and there I have my nice little packet of my dumpling dough and I'm gonna spread that flour out. And then I'm gonna get my rolling pin and I'm gonna make sure and flour it really well. And I'm just gonna start working my dumpling, dumpling dough out. And because this is nothing fancy, <laughs> you can kind of just move it around and make sure your surface is good and floured. And I like to press mine out to about an eighth of an inch. So we're gonna do that slowly. I'm gonna turn it, flip it, wipe off some of that excess. Keeping my rolling pin well floured. And we like ours thin because we're using self-rising flour, they tend to kind of puff up really good in that water and broth mixture. And now here is an easy trick for you. It doesn't matter if your edges are not uniform because when it cooks, they're all gonna do their own thing anyway. So I'm gonna take a pizza cutter and just cut them out into ribbons 
Doesn't matter, they can be all different sizes. But we like ours kind of small so that they cook through and they're not too doughy and chewy. All right, and then I just take it crossways and cut them. And now I normally like to let mine rest here a little while on the counter while we are coming to a boil, but because we're doing such a small amount, and my water has already come to a boil. Now you'll see they're not nice and neat. They're all different sizes, but hey, it's okay, because when they cook, it's not gonna matter anyway. So my broth and my water has come to a boil, and I'm just gonna take a bench scraper and I'm just gonna take up a bench scraper full at a time and drop those into the water. So we're gonna add these into the boiling broth all at once. And then all I have to do, and I had a fork. Do I still have a fork? <laughs> And I've got a mess, a good mess to clean up all over me. I should have worn my apron. All right, so we're gonna stir these one time just to make sure that they kind of separate in the boiling broth. And you'll find that when you put them in that your boiling kind of stops, and that's okay. <laughs> because it'll come right back up in just a minute. So I'm gonna kind of clean up my surface here <clears throat> set it to the side and wipe my hands off so did you see how easy that was I mean there was really almost nothing to it uh, sure it makes a mess and sure that's a little inconvenient but you know that that really doesn't matter in the whole scheme of things once you taste these uh, I promise you it'll be worth all the cleanup in the world so at this point, once we have come back to a boil, we are going to add in our chicken. And the process is the same whether you're using your electric pressure cooker or if you're doing this on the stove top. Now here is where the difference comes in. If you are using your electric pressure cooker, you're going to turn it off and then you are going to fit the lid on securely. You're going to set it the vent to seal, and then you're going to set it to pressure cook for 10 minutes. Then when the cook time is over, you'll turn the unit off, and then you will allow the pressure to naturally release for about five minutes. Then you'll come in and carefully open that vent to release any remaining steam, and then you're ready to eat. It'll be really hot, but you're pretty much ready to eat. If you're doing this on the stove top, once you add your chicken in, you'll lower your heat to simmer and you will cover it and let it cook for about 20 to 25 minutes, stirring every once in a while. You don't want to stir it too much, but you just want to make sure that those dumplings don't stick together. But I promise you, if you make them thin enough uh, and you go ahead and stir it once you get them in there then they kind of separate and do their own thing then you'll come out with the perfect dumpling every time so whatever process you choose you're going to be left with a really flavorful really good dumpling and the only short cook you shortcut you took was letting somebody else cook your chicken <laughs> so we're going to let this do its thing and then we'll be back shortly to show you the finished product Hey everybody, we are back. Our uh, electric pressure cooker has stopped its cook time and we've let it sit for about five or 10 minutes uh, just so that pressure can natu naturally release. Now, if you're doing this on the stove, uh, this would take about 20, 25 minutes uh, and then you'd be ready to eat once it cools. Now this, like a lot of our other recipes, is just a basic, chicken and dumplings recipe. There are a lot of different variations that people do. They add vegetables a lot of times um, and many other different things. You can also do this with turkey uh, and 
it, it's really, really good. Uh, and there are lots of people who do it with wild game. <laughs> so uh, this is a good basic recipe just to get you started, to get you in the kitchen and get your thought processes going so that you can have the basics of good southern cooking now if you're doing this like we did in the 10 minute cook time in your pressure cooker you will now want to carefully release the pressure in your pot and you that means opening that vent very first so i like to take a long spoon and just reach and open and even if you've let it sit for a long time, always do that first because you never know how much pressure is going to be in there. And believe me, you want to get it out of there before you pop that lid off. Also, doing it with a long-handled spoon keeps you from possibly getting burnt by the steam that does come out. We didn't have any left, which is good. So now we are going to carefully open our lid. Now, there's a lot of condensation on the lid and some suction so we're going to be really careful and y'all they're perfect i'm going to dip some out and show you just how perfect they are and this recipe reminds me of my great grandmother my great grandmother was one of those that she always had food <laughs> whether she knew you were coming or not she always had food ready for anybody who might stop by and one of my favorite things to eat at her house was her chicken and dumplings so when i can remember the first time that i made my own dumplings i almost cried and and danny can verify this because it tasted just like my mom's so this for me makes me happy every time i make it and would you look at how beautiful those dumplings turned out they are done they are cooked all the way through and ours are thin so you're absolutely certain that they have and they're not chewy they're not doughy and they're not sticking together even in the bowl and that chicken because sometimes i know if you get a rotisserie chicken it can be a tad on the dry side well trust me when you put it in all this broth and with the dumplings it's gonna almost reconstitute and get soft again and that chicken, even though I shredded it, uh, has turned into just, I mean, it'll probably melt in your mouth. So this is our version of easy chicken and dumplings. And in my opinion, we didn't make any shortcuts. Uh, and so this is homemade, just as homemade as it would have been if I had made the chicken myself. In my opinion, the only difference in true homemade chicken and dumplings is I didn't go out in the yard and slaughter this chicken. <laughs> if you really want to get technical about it. Uh, anytime you buy your, your proteins from the store, it's really not homemade, is it? So uh, this is as close to homemade as today's kitchens you can find. So we hope that you love this recipe. We hope that you take it and you make it into something even better for your family. We at The Buttered Home like to do two things, and that is to get you in the kitchen cooking and thinking about cooking. And also, if you're in the kitchen cooking, then you are automatically spending more time with your family because you are cooking for them. Uh, we believe the heart of the home is in the kitchen, and that's I know where I can be found doing things like this for my family. So we're not going to keep you any longer because they're ready to eat this. <laughs> So as usual, we hope that you're following us on our other social media platforms. We are also on Facebook and Instagram, and we cook live every Monday night on those platforms, and we would love to have you join us for Messy Kitchen Monday there as well. Also, make sure you've subscribed to our channel here on YouTube and ding the bell to, so that you can be notified whenever we drop new videos like this one. As usual, uh, we love you guys and we hope you love what we're doing here. If so, leave us a comment and be sure and share this video with your friends. So from the buttered home to your home, we love y'all. Bye.